I've been thinking a lot about Emil Smith Rowe. I've been thinking a lot about this player who wears the number 10 shirt at Arsenal, who came through Hale Academy, who scored a load of goals from midfield before his real injury problems, who was doing it from the number 10 position, from out on the left, and who came through at a time where Arsenal needed the youngsters to step up, where we needed something fresh, something to get behind. We needed a new chance to sing. And there he was, along with Bakaya Saka and other talented young players. It felt like we had a team we could start to believe in again. And that team is there, but suddenly it's there and Emil Smith Rowe doesn't feel a part of it. And yet more recently, we're starting to believe that he could be a part of it. There is an absence of a real number eight in this current Arsenal squad. There is a player there who feels like he could be the answer. And we started to see a little bit more in terms of minutes on the pitch and we started to hear the right things. But we also know of maybe not bids coming in, but we know of movement from other clubs. We know that the likes of West Ham tried to get him on loan, but I was delighted to hear that Mikel Arteta, Arsenal, the player, everyone involved, battered off you know the suggestions of him going to West Ham and going on loan that is not what he needs if he's going to make it at Arsenal he's got to be at Arsenal he's got to be given the chance to prove it for all I've said there I do think he's got five months I do think he has got the next five months and you might all you might think that's brutal you might think that's harsh you might think that's a bit dramatic but I am at that stage I'm going to provide the evidence I'm going to explain I'm just going to say that and expect you all to believe me but I really am starting to get a bit concerned that we've got five months to see if Emil Smith Rowe is that guy and if he's not we've got real brutal questions to answer come this summer and unfortunately Emil Smith Rowe will probably have you know real questions to ask himself as well about where his career is going and whether he's really going to make it at Arsenal whether he's got the trust to get the minutes he needs to prove himself and if he does get those minutes then he's got to be able to prove himself as well so why do I feel this kind of now or never moment for Smith Rowe why do I feel like if it's not going to happen now then it never is because again you're all probably thinking James this is pretty dramatic but I really believe that and I'll tell you why it starts with the fact that it kind of feels like he's not had this kind of belief from Mikel Arteta in the last two years that he's had seemingly in the last week. You know, Arteta's starting to speak a lot more glowingly of him, speaking about how well he's training, speaking about how much he likes him. And then he gave him a real significant amount of minutes against Palace. In recent games where we've needed goals, Smith Rowe's either not seen the pitch or he's only seen a couple minutes. It feels like now we're starting to see Emil Smith Rowe start to get some time on the ball, start to play with the first team, start to get significant minutes in games to see what he's about, to see if he can make that left eight position his own. And the reason we want to see if he can make that left eight position his own is because no one else has. From Granit Xhaka leaving, we've seen Fabio Vieira, Declan Rice, Kai Havertz, the the main player who's playing that role, Leandro Trossard, and there's one more, oh, of course, Emil smith who I'm talking about. We've seen all five played in that area and no one has earned, no one has owned it. No one has made it their own. I think Declan Rice is by far the closest, but... Declan Rice was really brought in as a six, it feels. When you look at the makeup of a lot of our midfields, the reluctance to use Jorginho, a backup number six at times, it feels like Arteta very much was looking at Rice as the long-term number six and playing him there. So he tried to find other internal solutions for the eight. He hasn't found them yet, but the player that's been given the least opportunity in that role has been Emil Smith-Rowe. So can he take it? Again, now or never. Because if he doesn't, what's going to happen in the summer in terms of addressing that position in the market? We tried to address it with Kai Havertz and he's the player who's been given the most opportunity. The £65-pound signing who arrived from Chelsea, was playing mainly as a striker for them, has been playing a lot as the left eight, but it hasn't really clicked hasn't worked listen he's not playing very well haven't been particularly impressed with Kai Havertz at all you look at Fabio Vieira in that role he's done some nice things but again is he a little bit lightweight does he maybe suit more the right side of the midfield three being an understudy to Erdegaard he's done okay but he's had injury problems that's another big thing being out the team he's not been able to try and cement that place in the team himself and the really big absentee that's kind of worked for Emil Smith has been Thomas Partey being out because Partey being out means that Rice has been playing more as a six so we have someone with dynamism in that area and it means that Rice, or at least the temptation to play Rice in that eight hasn't been there because Partey would have been fit. With Partey out, he is returning, may I say, and I think the return of Partey does make you think that actually he will revert to the Partey-Rice-Erdegaard midfield. It is what I'd go with right now, but there's also been a reluctance to use Partey in midfield when he's actually had him this season, although you know, understand he's very, very rarely had him. We're talking about the very, very start of the season. All that tells me that the left eight position is still there to grab. If Emil Smith-Rowe wants it and he performs to that level, he will earn that position. And I think tactically, we've never been better set up for it. I think once upon a time with Xhaka playing in that left eight role, if Xhaka was missing and Smith-Rowe came in, 
it just felt like a square peg, uh, you know, around a ra- around a round hole. I don't know if I've said that right. But my point is, it didn't fit. Because Granit Xhaka on the ball would get forward, be the box-to-box, run beyond the strikers, underlap, all that. But out of possession, would drop next to Thomas Partey and we'd form a two in front of the back four. But things have changed a little bit this season for Arsenal. Not completely, but generally, even though Sinchenko likes to invert a lot and likes to take that position, take up that position alongside, you know, a number six in front of the back three. You also see him building up at times a little bit wider so that Martin Odegaard can actually drop in and be a part of the build-up with Rice. You see with Kai Havertz occupying that position, it gets him into a more striker slash second striker position, which I think was Arteta's plan for Kai Havertz all along. But does that not feel like the perfect position for Smith Rowe? If Odegaard is going to you know, assume the responsibility of being the second build-up player alongside a rice like Granit Xhaka was, then isn't Smith Rowe perfectly placed to play that kind of floating number 10 role, making runs off the ball, overlapping, underlapping, getting on the ball in in and around the penalty area. We know he scored a lot of goals before and has had good goal-scoring seasons, so he can be someone who can play in those higher areas of the pitch. He can bring his energy to that role and off the ball, he can still drop into a midfield three. He's got a little bit of presence he's got a decent build and can actually you know throw himself about in midfield a little bit and actually get stuck in an area but not be so dependent on the build-up phases because Martin Odegaard can be in there to do that it does feel like the team is tactically set up better than ever for Emil Smithrow to jump in that position but again he needs to be given the opportunities to do so and if he's not given the opportunities to do so then I don't know when they're going to come Arsenal at the moment have financial fair play issues which are the reason why deals aren't getting over the line in January the deals why Arsenal reluctant to do big business in January because they simply can't. They're having to be careful. FFP seems to be keeping an eye on everyone. And when you get to this summer, summer 2024, you know, you're looking at the squad again. Arteta's going to his fifth full season and ruthless decisions might have to be made. You might look at those players that aren't good enough for your first 11, but still command a pretty decent fee from rival clubs who are looking to sign them. Now, Emil Smith-Rowe, a player who I think his stock is still up there. What does he go for in the summer? What does he go for as a player who is probably good enough to play Premier League minutes for a really good side, but hasn't quite been doing that? Maybe 30 to 40 million. And that might be a big, big sale for Arsenal when it comes to FFP. Pure profit because he's a player coming out of the academy. And if you've had him this long and you've not been able to make it work because of injuries, consistency, the manager hasn't fancied him, the player's not done it then is that not a deal that the Arsenal hierarchy are likely to do and maybe put a little bit of pressure on Smith-Rowe to essentially move on? Or the other way, Emil Smith-Rowe might think, it's been four, three, four years now that I've been around the first team and it's just not happening. I need to move on as well. That's why when I take all this into account, it feels like a now or never moment for Emil Smith-Rowe. Now, where I do have real hope for him is there's no other profile like him in our squad. We've got three left-footed attacking midfielders in Erdegaard, Vieira, Havertz. He's a right-footer. He's more of a box-to-box. He's probably got more dynamism and energy than those three. And he's a pass and move play. He can make runs off the ball and he can play that number 10 slash attacking midfield on a slightly different way. Now that gives me hope that he actually is a really nicely balanced right-footed option partnered with a Rice or an Erdegaard or a Partey in there and that feels like it can work but he needs to be given the chance to do so. I think it's now or never for Smith Rowe. If it doesn't happen these next four to five months, I'm not sure it ever will. And I just want to say a really big thank you for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, actually hit the links right here to watch more content like this, including my Football First podcast, which drops every Monday to Friday at 6am. And I know it's annoying. I am really sorry to have to ask. But if you want to show support to the channel, hitting the like and subscribe buttons help promote the content much more than you could possibly know. Thanks again.